Swedish design has always been famous for its minimalism and functionality. The Yas 39 Grip and Fighter from Saab was no exception. Its appearance and design clearly reflect the form follows function philosophy, according to which every element of the aircraft is designed to ensure maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. But can the Gripen remain competitive against bestsellers such as the American F-35 Lightning II from Lockheed Martin? Let's figure that out right now. Creating a modern and, most importantly, a well-selling fighter is no easy task, especially in the current conditions of the world when even industry giants who've been working in this field for over a hundred years are forced to adapt to the government's whims and during systematic budget cuts left and right. Against such a background, it's especially impressive how the relatively small Sweden, with a population of just over 10 million people, was able to successfully support the development program of its own multi-role fighter, the Yas 39 Gripen. Yas owes its acronym to the research underlying its development, Yacht Attack, Ox Spanning Flyping, or simply Yas. These words mean an aircraft for fighting, attack, and reconnaissance. As for the name Gripen, it was proposed by flight attendant Helena Sillen as part of a contest by Flagwappen Knit Magazine in 1982. The mythical creature, combining the strength of a lion and the wisdom of an eagle, seemed to the competition jury to be an excellent combination. Not to mention the logical connection with the predecessors of the Yas 39, the Saab 35 Draken or Dragon Fighters, and the Saab 37 Vigan, which received its name in honor of Vig or Askvig, Thunderbolt, the Thunderstones of the Askvigger, which appeared from the lightning strikes of the Scandinavian god Thor when he hunted giants with his warhammer, Mjolnir. One has to agree, the folklore company turned out to be very suitable. The question of replacing these same dragons and stones became especially acute in the late 1970s. The Swedish Air Force needed an affordable vehicle capable of flying at speeds up to Mach 2 with performance capabilities that allowed it to take off from short runways of 2,625 feet long and 55 feet wide. The latter requirement was directly related to the tricky Boss 90 airbase system used by Sweden during the Cold War. Its main idea was the defensive dispersal of the country's Air Force aircraft across many military air bases in case of war. Each of these bases housed one squadron of 8 to 12 aircraft, which made it possible to partially protect military forces from nuclear weapons and enemy airstrikes, not only making it more difficult for them to destroy the Swedish Air Force on the ground, but also providing them with additional longevity in a conflict scenario. Another goal set for the engineers was to create a fighter smaller than the Vigan, but with similar or even greater range and payload. Early proposals under the Yas program included the Saab 38 or BL-3A single-engine jet attack aircraft, as well as the Saab A-20, which was a further development of the JA-37 Vigan with fighter, ground attack, and maritime reconnaissance capabilities. The option of simply buying fighters from the Allies was considered. For example, the American General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon, McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet, Northrop F-20 Tiger Shark, or the French Dassault Mirage 2000. However, in the end, the Swedes firmly decided to create their own fighter from scratch. It was to be a single-engine, lightweight, single-seat craft with an aerodynamic canard shape, unstable design, and fly-by-wire technology. The shape was not chosen by chance. The Swedish Air Force had garnered good experience and feedback from pilots from the Gripen's predecessor, the Saab 37 Vigan, widely acclaimed as the first canard-equipped aircraft to be produced in large numbers, 329 units built. The canard control surfaces provided positive lift at all speeds, while the generous lift from the delta wing offset the rear stabilizer, which generated negative lift at high speeds and increased the overall induced drag. The intentional instability of the aircraft was evened out by the fly-by-wire digital flight control, innovative at that time. It removed many of the flight limitations, improving maneuverability and reducing drag on the Gripen. In addition to the pair of air brakes located on each side of the rear fuselage, engineers also angled the canard slightly downwards to act as air brakes, reducing the landing distance. With an eye to operation from air bases of the Boss 90 system, the Gripen has good short takeoff performance, being able to maintain a high sink rate and strengthen to withstand the stresses of short landings. 
Basic versions of the Gripen were equipped with a Volvo RM12 turbofan engine derived from the General Electric F404 and fed by a Y-shaped air duct with splitter plates. The RM12 received increased performance and improved reliability to meet single-engine safety criteria, greater resilience to bird-related incidents, and reduced maintenance requirements due to the redesign of several subsystems and components. By November of 2010, the Swedish fighter had secured the unofficial title of record holder among single-engine aircraft, having flown over 143,000 hours without a single engine failure or incident. However, in the latest modification of the Gripen E, also known as the Gripen NG Next Generation, the fighter still received a new engine, the F414G, an improved version of the General Electric F414, capable of producing 23% more thrust than the current RM12, 22,000 pounds versus 18,000 pounds. Thanks to the F414G, the Yas 39E will be able to fly at supersonic speeds of Mach 1.1 with a full payload, making it one of the few fighter aircraft worldwide capable of operating at such speeds. Also, let's not forget about the longer service life of the F414G engines, reaching 8,000 hours and 15-20% to better fuel efficiency compared to its predecessor, RM12. The full integration of the Yas 39's avionics using five MIL STD 1553B digital data buses, described as sensor fusion, made the Swedish fighter a programmable aircraft. That is, to improve the performance of the device, add additional operational roles, and support the latest equipment, one must provide it with regular software updates. It's somewhat reminiscent of the principle of receiving updates for American F-35 Lightning II fighters. To replace the basic PS-05A Pulse Doppler X-Band multi-mode radar from Ericsson and GEC Marconi, the new modification Gripen-E came with the Acer Radar Raven ES-05. This one is capable of scanning the fighter's surroundings with a significantly increased field of view and improved range using the Skyward g Erst sensor, which can detect targets at low radar cross-section RCS, beyond visual range. In addition to the single 27mm Mauser BK-27 cannon, the Gripen is compatible with a number of different weapons, including the AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile, the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile, and the RBS-15 anti-ship missile. In 2010, the Yas-39 fleet completed the MS-19 upgrade process, ensuring compatibility with MBDA's Meteor long-range missiles, Iris T short-range missiles, and GBU-49 laser-guided bombs. As for the total weight of the Gripen's equipment and armament, it sits at about 14,330 pounds. These are not only missiles, but also external sensor modules for reconnaissance and target designation, like the Lightning from Rafale, Saab's modular reconnaissance pod system, or digital joint reconnaissance pod by Thales. In today's Spectrum Warfare environment, special attention was paid during the creation of the Gripen to the installation of an advanced integrated electronic warfare suite capable of operating in an undetectable passive mode or actively jamming enemy radars. And all this was then polished with the very pride of Saab, the new electronic warfare system, EWS, features a 360-degree spherical missile approach warning system, MODS. Furthermore, Yas-39 received support for secure radio communications, Saturn, Link-16, Rover, and satellite uplinks. Equipment for long-range missions such as an in-flight refueling probe and the onboard oxygen generation system, OBOGS, has been integrated into the more recent versions, the single-seat Yas-39C and double-seat Yas-39D. In 2013, Saab announced that it was the first to introduce a disposable bright cloud active jammer created by Celix ES into a fighter. Just one year later, one further addition to the list of Gripen innovations appeared in the form of a modular self-protection unit enhanced survivability technology. After the presentation of the new modification of the Gripen E, many experts posed the following fair question. Why did Saab decide to ignore the stealth trend that has been steadily advancing in aviation over the past decades? The company, in turn, said that with the current pace of software and hardware development, stealth aircraft will eventually become much more noticeable to radar, and since any airframe is very difficult to change or reconfigure in the future without huge financial and time losses, Saab decided that the most rational approach 
was to keep pace with competitors by using rapidly developing non-stealth technologies like advanced electronic warfare. That is, keeping F-35 stealth aircraft on alert cost the United States a pretty penny, while Gripen fighters were originally designed for rapid field deployment to wild bases with a minimal logistics footprint and maintenance by a small team. Magnus Goberg from Saab emphasized that with Gripen, you do a turnaround within 10 minutes if you're doing air-to-air -air missions, you do the refueling and rearmament, and that's building sortie generation so that we can perform a lot of missions in a defined period of time. And in general, the use of camouflage in the form of an advanced and reconfigurable electronic warfare system suits Saab much more than a multi-million dollar investment in an initially secretive but much more expensive aircraft configuration, especially since Saab's actively selling Gripen to other countries. To date, the number of Gripen units that have rolled off the production line has exceeded 300 units, of which more than 100 were purchased by partner countries – Brazil, South Africa, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Thailand. The cost of one aircraft, despite the impressive number of upgrades, still remains very low – about 30 to $40 million for the Yas 39CD, depending on the configuration, and 50 to $60 million for the new Gripen E. If the country wants to purchase a brand new F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter, it'll be forced to shell out 80 to $90 million. In this case, the buyer has to answer one simple question – are you looking for a show horse or a workhorse? Well, dear viewers, we invite you all to tell us in the comments what you found most interesting about these Swedish Griffins. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.